Hello, my name is Mark, and I'm a lecturer, technician demonstrator at West Suffolk College. And today, we are going to do an offset. Most plumbers at the moment are using flexible connectors, which you bend to which size you want. Good things is, easy to do. Bad thing is, eventually, if the tap becomes loose, it starts to wobble, and there's also Inside this is made of rubber and plastic. We get microplastics and micro rubbers. So what we're going to do today is we're going to bend it in one piece, solid piece of copper pipe, no fittings, and we're going to do two, because most offsets are multiples of two, four, sixes and eights. The way I'm going to show you to do it means you've got something to reference back on. If you've got a bank of eight or ten pipes, you can do every single one at the same angle and at the same size. So they look really nice when fitted. So first of all, what we need to do is, I've cut two pieces of pipe, same length, and I have two lines on the board, 70 mil apart. Obviously in a building site, you wouldn't be having all these tools, or all these pieces of wood everywhere. This is just to show you the basic knowledge of how to do an offset and get them all spot on exactly. The first measurement I'm going to do is from the end of the pipe in. Now I've got to be careful, I can't make this size too short. And the reason for that is, when I move over to the bending machine, if it's 80 millimetres or less, the end of the pipe ends up on the hook. If I try and bend the pipe that way, I'll misshape the end of the pipe and I can't get a fitting on. So what we normally do is, we measure from the end of the pipe, 120 millimetres in, on both pipes, like that. This is the size, I'm going to mark with the X again. This is the side that goes on the hook side. You always, always bend onto the side that we're going to cut or we're going to bend after that. So the, mo the biggest question that we normally get in college is, what angle for that offset or that size of offset? The easy way of doing it, if it's 40 mil offset, round about 40 degrees, 50 mil offset, 50 degrees. The more you do offsets, you naturally pick out the correct angle for the bends. If you're not too sure, the way I show the students or the learners is I've got a pivot ruler and a 600 mil rule. So what the first thing I do is I work out that I'm doing a 70 mil offset. So I subtract 70 mil from 600, which leaves me 530 millimeters. And now I use the points of the pivot rule. I put one on the zero. I subtract the 70 from 600, which leaves me 530 and it's a rough idea, and that is the angle of the first bends. Obviously, as a plumber, I wouldn't be carrying two things like this in my tool bag just to make it heavier, but to get used to the concept of it, it's an easy way of remembering. So I'm going to do my first bend on my first piece of pipe. I take it over to the bending machine, and I've got the guide. 15 mil pipe, 15 mil wheel, the exact same process if you're using it on the 22mm wheel as well. So I put the pipe in with the X on the hook and that mark on this Hillmore bender I put between the one and the five. That's my starting point for the bends and I'll do exactly the same for the second piece of pipe. I will put the guide in, close it off. I will get the angle that I've just put on the ruler. I'll lay that on top, roughly on the center and then I'll bend the pipe round to roughly meet that angle, which is round about there. And I'm sort of guessing that I could be a couple of millimetres out, but the process is exactly the same and I'm in the ballpark. I can put the ruler down out the way now, and I can take the pipe out. That's my first angle. I go through exactly the same process with the second pipe. X on the hook, and I put the mark between the one and the five on the pipe bending machine. I hold it steady. Now I can use the ruler again and get the angle, but I can use that as my template. I hold that on top. I can put the mark above the one and the five and I can bend it round. And hopefully in doing that, I make sure that both angles are exactly the same. I can check that on the board. 
like that. The bend's at exactly the same point, and I've got two of exactly the same angles. Now, the ruler, I don't need these anymore. I can put them out of the way. Now for the second bend, and this is a bit most people find difficult. If I put this pipe in the bending machine that way, it bends in a big U-shape. So I work out what side I've got to mark the pipe on, which is this side. I hold that up to the two centre lines that I've drawn on the board previously, which are 70mm apart, and I line up the centre line with the line below. Once I do that, I transfer the second line on the other side over the top, as if I've dropped that line on top, and at the very top of the pipe, I put a line going across that way. I can put that to one side, I do exactly the same with the second pipe, I line it up on the centre line, and again, pretend I drop that line on top, carries on over the top of it, and at the very top of the pipe, I put an X. And now I'm ready to bend that second bend. Again, the, one, the side with the bend on it is the side that goes on the hook. That's the size I want to keep. I put it in the bending machine, and now the X is off the wheel of the bender. So what I need to do with that is, I can put my finger on the X, and I pull it back until the X touches the curve of the wheel. That may not be between the one and the five. It could be anywhere on that curve, depending on the angle and the length of the offset. But that's where you want it, just touching. I put the guide in, I hold it, I make sure it hasn't moved. I can check for level, that it's level with the bending machine, and then I bend it round. And now, I'm not using the ruler, I've got to use my eyes to make sure they're both parallel like a train track. Step back, have a look. That one's got to go a bit more. Bend it. So we are round about there, I think that's okay. I can check it by holding it on a straight edge and I can measure from edge to edge. That side is 60, that side's probably about 65. So I know this end has got to push up a bit. I can do that just a small bit, not too much. I can check it again and I can see the roughly level and they're parallel. I can check the size of this, there's no point in bending this one until I check this one. And these, this pipe should be central with both lines. And when I do that, I can see this one has kicked out a small bit. So to rectify that, I can put the hand on the bench and give it a slight squeeze and then check it again. It's a bit more. Always check it. Eventually, the copper pipe will bend and collapse. Now, if that one's fine, I can put that to one side. I can do the second one. Process exactly the same. The bend goes on the hook side. That's the size I'm going to keep in the bend. That corner of the X touches the wheel. I put the guide in. That holds it steady for me. Make sure it's level with the bending machine. And again, I'm going to eye it up and I'm going to bend it parallel with the first bend. Just a bit more, just checking it all the time. Again, I can take it out. I can put it back down on top of the two lines to make sure they're parallel. That one's fine. I can check out the one that I've just done. Both exactly the same size and parallel. And you can check them on top of each other. So they're spot on. And now when I fit it on a wash hand basin or a radiator or whatever, the exact same angle, exact same size, and they look quite professional and a hundred times better than an old flexible connector. Thank you.